Hey folks, welcome back to Retirement Roadmap with Master Plan Retirement Consultants. My name is Evan Fricks. With me as always, investment advisor, representative, and retirement planner, Mark Fricks. For many Americans, one of their largest, if not largest assets uh, is a retirement account or several, whether it's an employer sponsored plan like a 401k or a 403b or a traditional IRA or a Roth. Though a 401k or similar may be among the most substantial assets of an individual, oftentimes we find that folks know little about the actual account. Um, there are many tax rules, rules that can occasionally change. Um, there are also plan specific rules for 401ks and, and other defined contribution plans. So in today's episode, we're going to discuss some of the details of these accounts uh, and how you may be able to save money when you begin making withdrawals. Uh, when it comes time to make withdrawals, there's a lot to consider. It can be a little confusing, Mark. What's amazing is, is so many people that we talk to really have very little idea about how their 401k or thrift savings plan or 403b or whatever it is they have at work. They know very little about it. I mean, it's not like they have a training class. Theoretically, the company that sponsors or sets up the 401k is supposed to offer training. I know we do if we set up a 401k, but many times they don't, or maybe they don't really understand the language. Um, even as simple as what does your company match? You know, if I put in a certain amount of money, how much does my company put in? Even something as simple as that is unknown. And then you start getting into the, the options in the 401k or whatever account it is. People have no idea, you know, what, what's going on with that. So it's, it's really a shame that uh, where the majority of the assets in this country sit is probably the least understood area. Mm. I think, yeah, I mean, we're going to go through bullet point after bullet point of things and try to make it uh, cohesive. But I think one of the overall arching things we tend to see is people don't realize when they look at their big 401k or whatever it may be that um, not mm -hmm. all of that money is theirs. Right. As we like to say, there's a mortgage on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the mortgage is placed there by the IRS. Now, we're talking about traditional uh, accounts. We're not talking about Roth type uh, accounts, but uh, you know they rewarded you by giving you a deduction when you put money in that. Uh, so that feels all good and fuzzy this year, right? But it comes out taxable. So if you've got a million dollars in your 401k, you really only have maybe six to seven hundred thousand in there because it is taxable as it comes out. Uh, so that is something that's that's uh, you know when you look at your statement. Um, you really have a good bit less than what you thought you had. Mm -hmm. So that it's taxable at your income bracket. Yeah, whatever year you take it out, whether it be uh, all at one time or whether it be over the course of 30 years or whatever it may be, combined with any other income you have, including Social Security, pension, if you have a part-time job, yeah, it's going to put you in a different tax bracket. And if you know what your tax bracket is going to be in 20 years, please contact us. I'd like to know that as well. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so as we start to talk about um, withdrawals specifically out of these accounts, um, really so we can take some potential steps to minimize the size of our tax bill, I think the one of the big overarching obvious ones, but maybe not so obvious, is avoid early withdrawal penalties. Yeah, that's certainly a, a problem. Now, they are um, looking at adding some new rules. Um, you know, we had the Secure Act 1, the Secure Act 2. There is some um, propositions or, or ideas on the table about making maybe some of that account available for, uh, you know, for certain reasons. Uh, even right now, a lot of people may not know this, but money can be accessed in an IRA um, for certain emergencies mm -hmm. without a penalty. But otherwise, unless you're 59 and a half, and if you take money out of that retirement account, uh, it's not only taxable, but it's also an extra 10% penalty. Mm -hmm. And it will affect the rest of your life as well. Now, the nice part, uh, as you know, Evan, is many of these plans offer loans. Mm -hmm. So you can actually borrow money out of your 401k. I would much prefer you do that. Uh, in fact, that may be a better idea than putting something on a credit card in an emergency because the rates are a lot lower yeah. uh, and you're, you're kind of borrowing it from yourself. So it's not as, uh, as big of an impact. Mm -hmm. So that's certainly something, again, some people may not realize, may not know, uh, but it's, uh, it's so strategic and there's so many rules surrounding it which is why we've devoted this entire program to that. Yeah. So some of those, uh, you uh, reference them as emergencies, like if there were medical issues, if you're under 59 and a half. Another uh, way that you could potentially take some money out, I think it's 10,000 if you have a first time home purchase. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, and that, 
it may be possible to take penalty-free 401k withdrawals when you reach age 55 and not 59 and a half if you've left that job. That's only with the federal program. The is that thrift, only, mm -hmm. Is it really? It's not the okay, thrift savings plan uh, in which we work with a lot of federal workers. Another complicated layer that's added to retirement already. Uh, but the thrift savings plan, I've never seen a 401k with the ability to do that. Okay. But the thrift savings plan, if you are retired, so let's say you retired from the federal government at age 57, we always leave some money in the thrift savings plan, even though we may be managing some of it somewhere else, but we leave some of it there because it can be accessed penalty free under age 59 and a half and above age 55. So uh, that's where a lot of people that don't understand the federal system get federal workers in trouble because they roll it all out in IRAs. Now they have to wait till 59 and a half. Well, what if you needed $20,000? Well, it's gonna be a penalty on it. Yeah, yeah. And lastly, another reason you could bring it out early without a penalty would be college costs, education, right? Yeah, the, and I, I don't memorize the rules and all that, but yeah, exactly there are some. Yeah, what it is, but I think, yeah, for yeah, college as well. Asian. So so check with your advisor or uh, maybe your 401k company would know. You, typically, the employer doesn't know much about your 401k, uh, even your HR department. So we, tip, we will tell uh, our clients, call the actual 401k company that holds your 401k. They have the plan documents on file. They'll read through those. Many times, Evan, as you know, will be on the phone with the client uh, to make sure that the right questions are asked and make sure that maybe language that may be used that the client doesn't understand, we can say, okay, what they mean by that is this. Uh, so if you don't have an advisor that, you know, if you need to work out some issues with your 401k, let us know. Be glad to help you out with that. If you've determined to take withdrawals from your 401k, are there any limits to how much you can take out? from a standpoint of just withdrawals? Mm -hmm. um, no. I mean, you can take it all out. What if, do certain plans potentially limit the frequency of withdrawals? I've not seen that except in the thrift savings plan with the government. Most 401ks that I've seen, uh, you can take out a dollar. Now, there may be a minimum, so let's don't, let's don't get crazy with that. Maybe it's $2 or whatever. Sure. Uh, up to all of it. Now, the only problem is, uh, would be, if um, uh, when you start when you're 59 and a half and still working, there there could be some limitations on that, um, including vesting, including a lot. Of, some companies say, hey, you can take out what you put in, but you can't take out what we put in. Yeah. So there, it's a real complicated maze here that we go through, which is again is why we call the 401k company to find out exactly what their rules are, yeah. because every one of them, and think about it this way too, when, when the company, so you work for ABC Manufacturing, right? And so when HR is setting up this 401k or ownership, they don't really understand it either. So they're sitting down with the representative of the 401k, 401k company. They're basically going through a, a menu saying, like, do you want to allow this or not? Do you want to allow this or not? And of course, the 401k company is guiding them toward what's good for them. And if the, your company doesn't really understand the rules, it may not be as good of a plan as maybe another company that does understand the rules better. Not trying to complicate this. It's just, it is, it is so many different rules in the plan yeah. that we can't tell you what that is. Yeah, yeah. Um, so one way to get the money out, uh, potentially without a tax burden, would be to do a rollover. Right. Yeah, so... Um, couple of rules on that. Number one is uh, there's something called uh, an in-service transfer. So that sounds a little complicated. It's really not. Okay. So in-service means you're still working for that company. You're in service with that company, but you've reached 59 and a half. At that point, you are allowed to roll over a portion or all of your 401k into personal IRAs. And we will typically do that with most of our clients because it's a higher level of management outside of the 401k, mm -hmm. a lot more choices. You have the choice of the world versus those 12 funds or 20 funds in your 401k. We're able to actively manage it because as you know, your 401k, there's only so many trades that can be done per month. We can trade every day if we needed to. We wouldn't, mm -hmm. but we could. Um, and, and, and what I tell people in our, ta uh, in our uh, federal government class is that when I say the world's available, you can, Evan, you can actually put a rental house 
yeah. in an IRA. You can't put it in your 401k, but if you have a rental house, you can actually put it in your IRA or your Roth. You can put precious metals, physical precious metals, in an IRA. You can't do that with 401ks. Uh, so, and you right now most 401ks won't allow you to buy an annuity in them. Mm -hmm. And so, if you need guaranteed income for future, maybe you need an annuity. You're going to have to get it out of there as well. Also, at this point, you cannot do Roth conversions, and I'm sure we'll get into that more here in a little while. But you cannot convert out of a 401k into a Roth. It first has to be in an IRA, and Roth conversions are powerful. Uh, so, you know, there are certain opportunities when, when you reach 59 and a half or if you leave a company. So if you're 45 and you leave one company and you go to work for another one, uh, I would advise not rolling that 401k into the new one because mm -hmm. it's so limited. Whereas if you roll it to your personal IRA, again, much more choices, better level of management, all of that. So, again, yeah. talk to your advisor. Give us a call. Set up a, a complimentary session with us. We'll be glad to give you some guidance. Yeah, yeah. And we have past episodes that are uh, more detailed into income planning specifically. Um, but I would say if you are, if you know you have an income need and you plan for a portion of your 401k to be used from income, um, to just make withdrawals from the 401k is a very haphazard way of going about it. Mm -hmm. um, you don't get to select really where you're pulling the funds as far as the, uh, I mean, maybe on a very low level you do if you mm -hmm. decide to liquidate a certain fund that might be in there. But overall, um, it's a lot more haphazard. You can't, uh, the strategy, there's a limit to the strategy on creating income for the yeah. 401k. Very limited. And as you know, we don't like taking money from an account that is subject to market fluctuations. Right. Because if you're taking out, you know, a thousand a month to subsidize your retirement and that 401k is down 20% like it was a year and a half ago uh, or more, then you're taking money out of something that's worth a lot less. You're digging deeply into principal. It accelerates the possibility of running out of money. So you need something that, that looks and tastes a little bit different than a 401k to provide that income. Um, now, if it's something you take out here and there, and again, we've done shows about this before, a little bit different, but that's why we will take that 401k and put it into maybe six different kind of accounts, one for income, one for growth, one for tax-free, and whatever else the needs yeah. may be. Yeah. I want to take one moment, folks, to remind you of our website, masterplanretire.com. There you can find multiple retirement resources. Uh, more importantly, you can find a link to Mark's schedule. Uh, it's a schedule now button. Click it, click away, and you can be taken directly to Mark's calendar. Find a time that works best for you to schedule your complimentary consultation with Mark. That's actually two separate complimentary consultations. One where you discuss your retirement, your hopes, your dreams, give him a little information. Um, then the second meeting, we run some reports, uh, some illustrations for you on your own retirement, an opportunity to get a good 10,000 foot view of your own retirement. Uh, we stress test it a little bit, uh, see, see wh where you are, where you're headed, and uh, where you need to go. And that's all complimentary, and it, it really does. That's a perfect way to put it. It shows you where you're at and what could trip you up from getting to where you want to be from now to the end of life mm -hmm. <laughs> type of thing. Yeah. So they were, they're really powerful yeah. reports. Also, our phone number, feel free to reach out to us at our office, 770-980-9262. And again, the website, masterplanretire.com. Now, 401ks are also subject to RMDs. That's correct. So uh, folks that decide, hey, I'm going to leave my 401k at my job uh, and because I, I just love my job and I love the people there and I love my 401k, I don't really understand that mentality because it's not as good of an account for retirement. But hey, if that's your choice, that's fine. But you still are required to take money out of it at a certain age. Mm -hmm. Now, as you know, Evan, that age has changed. It used to be 70 and a half. Now it's age 73. If you're born in 1960 or later, it's going to be age 75. But they're forcing, the IRS is forcing you mm -hmm. to take money out of that foreign 401k, whether you need it or not, it's based on uh, an actual table in the IRS guidelines. Uh, it's also available on calculators online, uh, but every year it's a higher percentage. Mm -hmm. So the first year, it's around 3.7%. Year two, it's 4.2%. Year three, it's 5%. You get into your 80s, it gets up in the 12, 13, 14% range. Can mm -hmm. you imagine having to take 15% out of your IRA or 401k um, when you don't need it? and paying taxes on that 30000 50000 80000 Are you in another tax bracket? Probably you are now, right? So uh, RMDs are something, and you have to be very careful, as I'm sure you're going to bring up. There are penalties involved. Yeah, 
Yep. Um, yeah, a penalty for missing an RMD is 25% of the total that you should have withdrawn. It used to be 50. Yeah. Uh, thank goodness they changed that. But 25% of what you should have withdrawn, that's penalized on top of already being uh, taxed at your income level. If you fix the mistake quickly, the penalty could be dropped to 10%. I've seen that I've happen. S- oh, you've seen that well, actually yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like in the first quarter or so, if you go, oh, I missed the date or, or he missed this or whatever, uh, we help him write a letter to the IRS and say, this is what happened. We have now taken it. Here's proof we've taken it. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, <laughs> you know, yeah. we won't do it again type of thing. So I, yeah, I have seen it waived. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you want to be careful, especially as you get to RMD age, if you have an income plan, um, part of that is strategizing where you're taking income. You don't want to take more than you need, certainly not, and pay more in taxes than you should. Um, but that's all about income planning, tax strategy, and potentially legacy planning as well. And RMD planning all coming yeah. in together. So, you know, if you're taking income from your 401k uh, or IRA, um, and then at the end of the year, you go, oh, I've got to take an RMD of $10,000. Well, why didn't you take it over the course of the year as part of your yeah. income, right? So the RMD needs to be intertwined with your income plan, as you mentioned. Yeah, and just a, another point that uh, tends to have some confusion around it, and this applies to 401ks and IRAs, you also don't have to take it out of every single account as long as you take the total amount owed in RMDs that year. So let's say you have three IRAs um, and you only want, and you have those three together combined create a certain amount of RMDs that you have to take out that year. You could split it between the three accounts. You could just take the full amount out of two or just one. And that's why the strategizing really comes into play as well. You don't want to take out of an account that might have had a loss for the year. Yeah, people that don't work with an advisor, we we actually have a department that's dedicated to distributions and RMDs. And so we track that And because what happens is uh, as a client, you will receive a letter from your IRA company uh, that says this year you're required to take out X number of dollars, okay? And so clients that aren't working with someone, which would not be a client at that point, I guess they're, <laughs> they're an individual, um, they get these letters and so they say, okay, I got to take 3,000 from this one, 4,000 from that one, and 5,000 from that one. You know, I hate taking it out of this one because it's down 20%, but it says I got to. Mm-hmm. Well, technically you could take all three of those, like you said, from one. So we want to be strategic about that, which is why we typically don't automate that. We want to meet with the client during the year and say, okay, this is what we're seeing. This is what we want to take it from this year. Or you've already taken enough out because of your income. And we track that as well. There are also some advantages, tax advantages for contributing to charities as well. Right. You can contribute your RMD to a charity and kind of have a wash Mm -hmm. of your taxes on your RMD. we got a couple of clients that do part of their RMDs uh, to charities, whether it be a church, whether it be a a civic organization or whatever, as long as it's a 501c3 um, company then it's no taxes on that RMD. Yeah, and again, you know, that's just more planning, income planning specific. You know, you might be thinking right now, my entire RMD to a charity, don't I need something for income? But you know, if you start adding in your social security, maybe you have a pension or two, or your spouse does, um, eventually you might get to the point that that's just gravy, that's just icing on top of the cake. Huh. So if you do happen to tithe or give to a charity or something else like that, um, We've had clients in the past who, rather than giving every Sunday at church, they just write one check from their RMD that year and that covers them, and then they yeah. get that discount as well. Our churches, I know churches, I uh, haven't, haven't been involved with churches for, uh, all my life. Uh, a lot of them like the steady income. You can yeah, set up true. a monthly RMD. True. So yeah. every month it comes uh, goes to the church, and that's your tithe, and then it adds it for the whole year, and you're not paying taxes on that money. So yeah. it's, it's uh, uh, a smart way to do it if you don't need that RMD for yourself. Or maybe part of it, like you said, yeah. uh, could go to the church or your charity or whatever it may be. Yeah, and our audience, if they've been listening to previous episodes, will also know that we're big proponents of Roths and tax-free um, vehicles for the future. So strategizing withdrawals and conversions for um, for Roth accounts, things like that, and can also be very powerful tools as well. Yeah, getting that money out of the 401k or IRA into Roth, we're big believers in Roths and a few of the vehicles we use for tax-free or or tax deferral, Um, especially while taxes are still relatively low. uh, They are automatically going up at the end of 2025. Uh, So if we can get more done this year and next year, the better. 
Um, but again, it's a whole nother class, a whole nother session that we've had before, but it needs to be part of that overall because the more that you get out of your IRA, the smaller that you're required to take out of your, your IRA later on in years, and so uh, which lowers your tax burden later in years. So it's certainly a, a tax strategy that goes on for the rest of your life. And a, a very general point that, you know, is it, it's not necessarily uh, individually specific for everybody, but if you can prioritize paying taxes on your money when the rate is at its lowest and create a strategy around that, that's, that's really what all the conversion discussion is about. Um, the old ways of retirement planning, you know, 20 years ago plus, people all assumed that they'd be in a lower tax bracket in retirement. We're just seeing that for multiple reasons, that's not really necessarily the case. We don't see it from clients hardly at all. Not hardly at all. Uh, first of all, um, just outside of our you know taxes going up, our government spending, everything else just seems like things are going to keep increasing as our deficit increases. Um, people don't really want to retire and then also put a cut on their lifestyle. Yeah, most people that come in, in fact, according to articles and, and, and people, uh, things I've read, the average uh, person that retires lives on about 80% of what they lived on when they were working. But a lot of clients come in and say, I won't coming in the same thing I had coming in for the last 40 years. I didn't work all these years to take a pay cut type of thing. So there your bracket doesn't change much, if at all. And as you said, with taxes rising in the future, we're big believers that taxes will be higher in the future, um, then certainly need a plan to uh, make these um, withdrawals more tax efficient. Um, and of course, uh, again, Roths don't have required minimum distribution, so you're not yeah. required to take money out of those. So anything we convert to a Roth, you can leave in there the rest of your life or use it as you need it. Yeah, and uh, another option, another strategy to consider is, so these tax preferred investments or tax deferred investments, you could put those outside of traditional retirement accounts or Roths uh, as another option for savings on retirement withdrawals. Uh, we've discussed alerts in the past, life insurance retirement plans, which is an insurance product. Um, uni bonds, HSAs can be really powerful. Um, annuities as well. Yeah, annuities uh, tax defer your money. So uh, I had a client not too long ago, they, they got a big inheritance, three or $400,000. Uh, we could have put it all in the market, but they pay taxes on it every year based on the growth, capital gains, dividends, interest. But by putting some of it into an annuity, it defers the taxes. So no mm -hmm. taxes on the growth, only tax when it comes out, and then just on the profit. Mm -hmm. so, so an annuity can be a tax-efficient model as well. So investments that create long-term capital gains receive special tax treatment when maintained outside of a retirement account. Oftentimes when people are withdrawing um, money from a 401k or an IRA or something, they're often putting it in another account. So use caution uh, when you do that, understanding that you are potentially trading one tax rule for another and that you're aware of what those new tax rules are. Exactly. We, and we help advise, hey, this money's got to come out of your, out of your IRA, this required minimum distribution. What are we going to do with it? Because we don't want to continue compounding more and more taxes because it came out of the IRA. Yeah, we have a really great report that shows uh, the power of um, a tax deferred account and its growth through a retirement and even legacy for the next generation versus converting um, and, and the power of this, the money saved on taxes. And a lot of people don't consider with the RMDs the reinvestment. Okay, so what if you're not just spending the money and reinvesting it somewhere else? Um, that continues to spit off taxes and that just adds to that overall lifelong tax bill. And I love that report and, and it really opens people's eyes to what taxes really cost them. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the complimentary, complimentary reports we do for mm -hmm. uh, anyone that schedules a complimentary consultation. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and you know, just the last note, on, it doesn't end there. After um, your money passes on to your legacy, to your heirs, if they inherit those qualified accounts, they have to get it out within 10 years and they have to pay the taxes on those withdrawals right. as and well. That could be substantial. Yep. Well, folks, thank you so much for joining us today. We do want to remind you that this is not just a blanket recommendation. These are just points of consideration. We highly recommend speaking to a retirement planner, financial advisor for your own retirement needs. Again, check out our website, masterplanretire.com and schedule your complimentary consultation. Mark. Nice little green button on almost every page. Schedule a meeting and you push that. My calendar pops up. Uh, whether it be a phone call, a Zoom uh, meeting, uh, at one of our offices or whatever, uh, be glad to meet with you, provide that information, and uh, give you a copy of my complimentary book about retirement, the, the, the retirement roadmap. So until we see each other again, though, I want you to remember one thing, plan well and prosper. Take care, everybody.